Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours Europe. Uh, action items that I've got on the agenda for today. Um, action items. Jenkins elections. End of December newsletter. Actually, and I guess we should note November newsletter, <laughs> right? Because that's a good one to highlight. End of December newsletter, LTS 2375.1, Thanksgiving blog post retrospective, and I put interesting documentation, poll requests, and topics. Anything else that needs to go on the agenda, Bruno? Nothing I can think of. Thank you, Mark. Okay. All right. So let's talk about action items first, then. Uh, archive the website component on JIRA so that we can focus on GitHub issues. Alex Brandis has submitted a, not a, a he submitted a, I think it was an, a ticket submitted to uh, the help desk, to the infra help desk. Mm -hmm. So, and I'll get that archived or included here. He put it in and I made the mistake of clearing his suggestion. <laughs> here it is. Oh, why does it say rejected? That was silly. Hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll have to look it up separately. Sorry about that. Okay, so the other, Kevin, archive the uh, docs mailing list. So that one still in progress. One that has made good progress, not because of anything I did, but because of what Basel did. Um, a pull request documenting the web application server support policy. And it's a really nice piece of work that he's done. If we look at it, what you'll see is on the installing Jenkins page, it now talks about the server container policy. Oh, so nice. Included here, and if I open up war files, for instance, a place where server container policy can be quite important, whereas before it only had Java, web browser, Windows, and Linux, it now also includes a link to the servlet container support policy. Okay, well done. And it, it describes things as they are currently. Now, in addition to what Basel did there, he's also implemented tests to check for regressions in case the known working serv servlet containers were to somehow stop working. Oh. So he's created automated tests that perform checks of Wildfly, Wildfly version 26 and Tomcat version 9. I think it's nine. Yeah, Tomcat nine and Wildfly 26. So deeply grateful to Basel for that work. It's not just that we've documented what the reality is, he's also made it so that if we were inadvertently to regress, we should detect, have a better chance of detecting it. Yeah, that's great, fantastic. So that covered that one. Then anything else on action items? Hmm. No, no, thank you. Okay, Jenkins elections have been announced and the transition has started. Uh, Alex and Uli attended the last governance board meeting. And they start, we will start on December 3rd, am I right? That's correct. December 3, 2022 starts their term of service. Yeah. Officers and board members. Yes, exactly. Great. Now the November. So anything else on elections? Uh, no, except congratulations for being elected. <laughs> <laughs> yes, congratulations to Kevin. That's good. I like that. Also, yeah. All right. So November newsletter. Uh, Basel, thank you very much. So Alyssa has gathered the content, right? And but, uh, I'm sorry, Bruno, you have said, I said the wrong name. Yeah, that's okay. It you is have... so much, of course, when you think of something done, it may be Basil. It must be Basil. <laughs> no, not this time. Sorry, I did it. Uh, it's not finished yet. The PR has been created and I have a few things to, uh, to change. For example, the highlight section, but it's almost done. I think I'll be able to get it reviewed maybe tomorrow. Um, and so my goal is to have it published next Monday, so December the 5th. Great. Congratulations. Thank you very much. 
thank you, you and thanks a lot to all the submitters who made uh, their section and you made two i think so <laughs> congrats on that too <laughs> Yeah, I've I like the I like the exercise. I was able to reuse content in both mm -hmm. cases. It felt really great. Cool. Anything else on November newsletter? Mm, no, thank you. Okay, next was the end of December newsletter, <laughs> and what I had suggested to Alyssa, and she thought it was an okay idea. Checking with you as well was. What if we made the December newsletter a look back at 12 months rather than just a one month thing? I think that's great. That's a very good idea. And we have so much to say. Uh, we have to widely choose the subjects. But, you know, I, I'm not a long time user, a long time Jenkins user, but I've seen so many changes during that. Uh, it's even not a year because I have seen changes from April, I think. But from April to now, the changes are already major. You know, going to GDK 11, then 17, even some part 19, and the UI UX has changed quite a lot, mm -hmm. and some plugins are back from the dead. And yeah, it's amazing all what has changed. So I, I won't, um, how do we say that, you know, spoil uh, the <laughs> December newsletter, but we have lots of things to say. Good, yeah, well, and and let's see, okay, so I've got, I've got some for to include here. So documentation site search improvement. Oh, yes. Right. Just just one example. And it's really thanks to Algolia and uh, Gavin Mogan mm -hmm. that the search engine works much Finally better now. Works. I wish should we phrase it <laughs> finally works? No, that's no, not, no, but um, it, no. <laughs> it worked before it had aged. And it's no longer aged, and it's now got a nice, attractive experience. So yeah, they've they thanks to to Gavin and to to Algolia very very much. And uh, yeah, so we've got more topics. Let's see. So yep. and if things. if any if any come to mind, by all means, suggest them or propose them. It would be a great thing for Alyssa or you and Alyssa or others to have to choose which things they want to include in the newsletter mm -hmm. based on highest value, highest priority. I see. Okay, we'll do. Great. Anything else on that that idea? Are you okay with that idea? I'm totally okay. I think it's a great idea. So yeah, let's great. go for it. All right. So next piece was LTS 2.375.1 has been released. And uh, now one of the, the oopses here for us as a docs <laughs> SIG was we had to revise the upgrade gu guide after release. And what happened was I missed, I didn't do a thorough enough review of the source material. Uh, we had Windstone 6.4 in the baseline, but I believe then we did a backport of Windstone 6.6. .6. Oh. And that removed some additional command line arguments. And, and it was it's a really good thing because the the removed arguments had been deprecated for many years. And it was certainly time enough to get rid of them with the transition to the new version of Windstone. Okay, so it's not that the arguments have changed name, for example, they just they just disappeared. disappeared. Yeah, okay. Right. That's cool. Right. And if you read the upgrade guide, you'll see the, the description. It talks about, hey, this one, this one was, these two were taken away, and you do this one instead. Mm -hmm. Or these were taken away, they previously did nothing, and now they, they still do nothing, but they do nothing. <laughs> They fail because you can't use illegal arguments. Oh. Okay, in this case, less is more. Cool. Right, exactly. Less truly is more. The other is, on a positive side, 27 positive reviews on the ratings Ooh. and no, no, I had issues and no rollback. So that's good. Now, we got a while to get before we get to 330. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, Mark, uh, sorry to add that stupid question, but how do we enter uh, feedback for, you know, a, a new LTS version? 
because it's nice to see people are happy, but how do they tell us that they are happy or unhappy with the release? So they click this link, they oh. click this image. It's as simple as that. Well, it is, except, Ooh. okay, so when I click the image, it says thanks, right? Now I'm going to go back because I don't want to disturb the measurements. I have installed 375.1, so I, I happily can say, yes, I've been pleased with it. If I were to go back, though, and say, oh, I want to report an issue that I found on 346.1. So I could click the cloud, and it asks for an issue number. Okay. And, for instance, the, you, you'll see here there are some issue numbers that are clearly invalid. Mm -hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 12 are all invalid. Uh, that's because we don't bother to attempt to filter. Okay. Did People they give us a valid issue or not? And then you just enter one, two. Okay. Right. Can so, so, and that's that's what's happened here, right? Someone said, "Oh, I'm going to just play with this. I'll click it and type in a number <laughs> one, two, three, Jenkins one, two, three. Okay. But that's nice. It it is the scoring the rating system is is a sincerely very valuable for pe people who are trying to choose more particularly trying to choose the next lts baseline because mm -hmm. what we will do is we'll look at the ratings for the weekly releases and if the ratings are particularly bad okay 380 is one that hey it had some really rough times and you see there's one bug that got 16 reports and if we look at it it's this it's a performance issue that was dis detected. Oh, okay. So that helps because we know, okay, if, if 2.380 were chosen as a future LTS baseline, we would absolutely want to be sure that the fix for this one was backported. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I was wondering uh, for the previous month, how do they know the health of a future candidate to be an LTS or not? Now I understand. Thank you. Right. Yeah. So the, the trick is we look backwards in time, right? So if we look at 2.375, mm -hmm. here's this one. This was the baseline for, for the, the current LTS. And we see, all right, there are a few bug reports here. And I hope if we open some of them, it we'll see that it's fixed in... Mm, this one strange. doesn't tell me if it was fixed in oh oh this one is a complicated one that's why okay but we could we could try others and i suspect we'll see where it will tell us either oh it was cho chosen as a release as a release candidate or nope it was not selected and so this was oh this was a change in in a plugin so that's another challenge is sometimes bug reports will be list bug IDs will be listed here that are for bugs that are not actually in core and therefore mm -hmm. a core change can't fix it. Cool. So did that yeah. did that help you see the, the pattern? It's how now we crystal clear. Thanks a lot for taking the time to explain. All right. Good. So next next piece, then I wanted to take a few minutes we may want to delay this one a week until Kevin's available because I'm very grateful for his work and Alyssa's work and Hervé's work and I think your work as well, Bruno, on getting the Thanksgiving blog post out. Um, it, I thought it was a good idea. I think it really was a good idea, but it was very rushed and it meant yeah. that we had two people in the U.S. who were working on Thanksgiving Day, a day that's supposed to be a holiday, yeah, I find trying to get that, that blog yeah. post out. and mm -hmm. And so... It's just a reminder. There's something to improve there, but I'd propose we just carry it forward into next next meeting, and yeah. we'll do it when Kevin's here. Yeah, it would be better. Then the next piece was I proposed. This was a an idea I had just today. Topics that we might consider for just highlight interesting things that are happening in documentation. Mm -hmm. The November newsletter. Thank you very much, Bruno. You're welcome. I also submitted a proposal as a pull request to change election rules for board board members. The oh, idea. Yeah. I've seen the discussion. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Good. Sorry. No, no, that's that's. Oh yes, 
and discussion in Jenkins in the developer's mailing list. Then there was a new change that with the release of 2.375.1, that means 2.361.4, the preceding end LTS, is now second to la is 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 penultimate, right? It's second to yep. last. And that means it becomes a recommended version for choosing your, your Jenkins baseline. And therefore, there are changes in the documentation to do that. And changes are ongoing. Changes are ongoing in the, in the Jenkins development tool chain to make 2.361.4 uh, default or 2.361.x and what that means is Java 11. I see and regarding the documentation it has to be made by the human being the modification or can it be scripted with update P or whatever or does it even make sense to have a robot uh, change that in the documentation? Do we have absolutely to get it reviewed by a human being? No, actually, a, a robot a robot already does a significant oh. portion of it. And let's let's look at the portion the robot does, because I think what the robot does is actually really really a great idea that I think Daniel Beck started this idea. But let's let's look at what the robot does. So choosing. Choosing a Jenkins baseline. Here we go. Choosing a Jenkins version to build against. So what we see here is currently recommended versions. And what it suggests is 2.346.3 and 2.361.4 make good core dependencies. And then here it inserts the value 2.361.4 uh -huh. in the recommended code, in the in the set of code. Well, the way it computes those, if I click this improve this page, it'll take me to the to the, the page and then when I look for Jenkins.version, let's keep looking. Placeholder, okay. Yeah, oh there it is, yes, exactly. Placeholder, recent LTS point high. And the build process that constructs the website will replace that placeholder text with the actual value extracted from the Jenkins update setter. Okay, perfect. And it's it's things like this one has the same behavior, uh, placeholder latest split. Each of these is provided by this tooling that I believe Daniel wrote that reads the Jenkins update center or reads some other location, gets these numbers and provides them as text strings. Oh, so there is no GitHub action or whatever when the website is built, it gets a correct version number from another website. Oh, exactly. Fantastic. Right. That's so great. it's it's just as just as the change logs are data driven. The change logs are data driven from a data file that provides the definition. In this case, these numbers are data driven, but they're taken from data that's downloaded from an external from another URL, and then that data is fed into the process. I see. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so nice, nice result. That's all that I had. Anything else from you, Bruno? Regarding documentation, no. <laughs> Thank you. All right, then I propose let's call today's session done.